Uh, I welcome and uh, I request uh, Dr. Deepti to please introduce Professor Mamaya. Yes, ma'am. Uh, very good morning to all of you. And welcome to the second day of EFDP on global economy in COVID-19 opportunities and challenges. I welcome today's session expert, Professor Kiran Kumar Mamaya from Shailesh J. Mehta School of Management, Indian Institute of Technology, Mumbai. Professor Kiran Kumar Mumaya did his M.Tech from IIT Delhi and PhD from University of Toronto, Canada. Prior to joining Shailesh J. Mehta School of Management, he was associated with Department of Management Studies, IIT Delhi. He has also been visiting faculty with Institute of Innovation Research, Hitotsubashi University, Tokyo, Japan. He has done research and consulting projects for customers in government, ministries and industry in India and Japan. Presently, he is Editor-in-Chief of the International Journal of Global Business and Competitiveness. Sir has been instrumental in creating a vibrant research group working in the area of competitiveness. He serves on board of advisor of select institutions or committees or journals such as Managing Committee of the Global Journal of Flexible Systems and Management, an expert committee of the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India, National Competitiveness Research Institute of Industry Policy Studies, Korea, Journal of Advances in Management Research. Sir would be discussing the topic Institute Growth and Firm Competitiveness, Exploring Opportunities for Academic Growth. I welcome you, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Dikti. Am I audible? Uh, is, it, uh, uh, is my screen visible to you? Are you able to see my screen? Hello? Audible? Yes. Uh, is my screen visible to you? No. Uh, just a minute. I will. Uh, just a minute. How do I share, uh, share the screen? Can you? What is the link to share the screen? Hello? Uh, Professor Nina? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we are the... making you presenter. We are making you presenter. So then you will be able to share. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Very good morning to each of you. I'm getting some echo. Please uh, unmute everyone else except for you. Please wait a minute. No problem. So while we uh, get connected with the screen. Meantime, Namaskaram and very good morning to each of you. We are very sorry for uh, technical hitch and that caused the delay. Are you able to? Uh, Professor Mamaya, now you are the presenter. And you can share your screen or any material. Let me try, try sharing the screen. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Wonderful. First and foremost, uh, let me thank. Govind Singh in the first university, University School of Management Studies, particularly colleagues such as Professor Nina Sina, and others on the advisory committee or organizing committee for this opportunity of connecting with all of you in this digital mode. I wish that we were there face to face for such kind of the important faculty development program. However, all of you know the times are not permitting us for such live interaction. 
nevertheless with technology we should be able to communicate and exchange ideas on this very important faculty development program i would also like to compliment the organizing team for this very bold initiative of organizing faculty development program despite so many constraints and difficulties i know that each of them are sitting in different locations they are used to work together in one place to organize an event and now we are trying to organize the event in a distributed way it means that professor sharma is some other place professor dipti is at some other place professor nina is at some other place i am at other place and each of you are at very distinct different places despite all this distance we are able to connect digitally this is a great opportunity and great news the theme of this fdp is very apt that is global economy in covid 19 time opportunities and challenges i know that challenges overwhelm us and we feel that where are the opportunities there are challenging all around us from getting the milk for our morning tea to getting the rations i know how long can be queues at many places and i myself experience despite living in a great island we call indian institute of technology i have experienced the queues for a small amount item and sometimes it has taken almost 2 to 3 hours to get small thing but we should not get deterred by such kind of the situation rather we should really take it as an opportunity to think differently are you able to see the slide i have shared with you yes sir so what do you see i would like to hear at least few views i know that many of you may be muted but anybody who is able to see the slide and can is able to speak please share your view what do you see are you able to see some lush green patch in front of multi story buildings yes yes sir very good let me go to next slide and show you another dimension is this view more beautiful some of you may know this place and this place is called Viranandani, a major suburb of Mumbai in Pawai, where if you are walking in the streets of Viranandani and you are taken there directly with your eyes closed, you will feel that you are in some developed country. This is not a ground view; this is an aerial view. Nevertheless, some of you may get the feel for a developed patch. within mumbai let me take you one more view what do you see here some of you may be able to spot hills in the background the front part is covered with multi story building and some of you may be sharp to spot a little water patch between hills and foreground the water patch is called thane creek let me give you one more snapshot can anyone guess what this looks like or shall i give you a little more sharper view more closer view Are you able to see? So 
I just gave you a glimpse of four direction views from my lab. I call it Open Sky Lab because I can't go to my building. That building is under lockdown. But I'm very fortunate to be amid this beautiful world. I gave you four directions. I gave you north, south, east, and west views. And some of you may say that Sir, it is more beautiful in COVID-19 times. Can it be? I'm sure you must have read the news about beauty of Himalaya, visible from some remote states, faraway states. For decades, we were not able to see Himalayas from those places, and now we are able to see. What does it indicate? That whatever challenges, whatever negatives of COVID-19 are there, there are some positives. First and foremost, our cities are much more breathable. The air in our cities have cleaned up. The skies which we can see from our cities have cleaned up. And most of you will know <coughs> that even roads have been cleaned up. I have never seen road. I live in IIT Bombay at Pawai, and there is a link road which connects two major parts of Mumbai. Mumbai is a little different kind of the city, surrounded on three sides by the sea. The city has grown in only longitudinal direction. So there are western suburbs based on western railway line, and there are suburbs. The east located on central railway line. And these two major trunk lines of Mumbai are less connected. One of these connecting lifeline is something called Link Road. IIT at Pawai is on this Link Road. And this Link Road remains so busy from early mornings. I've seen it at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. And I've seen it at the peak hours of traffic jams in the afternoons or early mornings and in the night and the road always remains so full that even crossing this road can take you several minutes very recently i started testing this crossing the road again and i find that for 100 or 200 meters i don't see any vehicle unbelievable the road is so empty this is the situation uh, most congested roads and streets of our cities have also cleaned up. So if I follow social media, I can be afraid, right? Because Maharashtra has maximum number of cases in India. And the cases are still growing. Mumbai is the worst affected city because majority of cases in Maharashtra are happening in Mumbai. I consider myself to be very, very fortunate that despite living in one of the worst affected city of India, I'm having a good time. I may not be able to meet my students, that's certainly very sad. I may not be able to meet my faculty colleagues. I may not be able to go to my office or my lab or my lecture rooms. But nevertheless, I am able to continue to do research. In fact, I'm able to think much, much differently in these trying times. I'm thinking about not only some short term problems and issues, I'm able to think about much longer horizons because the crises which we are facing today, we don't face every year or every five year or every 10 year. Some people say that this is almost a century crisis. A similar crisis was faced by India in perhaps 1920, etc. While many of our soldiers and others 
did suffer or faced a lot of tough times in World War, but most of us had never seen the World War. The World War is another benchmark given that, oh, these are, these are the worst times after the World War. Nevertheless, I feel that I am able to breathe fresh air. I am able to drink my water. I am able to get my food. And I assume each of you are able to get air, water, and at least some food. If some of you are not getting, I am very sorry for that. What I am saying that we are getting our basic necessities. Yes, we are confined to our households. But take it that also as opportunity. When I see my busy times, my spouse often says that, why are you coming to home to just eat and sleep? I would love to be in my workplace, maybe 16 hours, 18 hours. Now I am at home. I am at home 24 hours. I am at home for almost a month. If I take it positively, then yes, we are at home. We are with families. And these are the rare opportunities for us to be closer to our family, to connect with our family, friends, relatives, and so many other people whom we wanted to connect, but we are not able to connect. Yes, we may not be able to connect with them physically, but don't mind. Even connecting them on virtually. Now technology has made us almost speak face to face. We are in an era where 10 years before we couldn't have visualized such good video conferencing facilities where we can connect not only on voice with one person, we can connect with multiple people and that too on video. Isn't it great? Means that technology has enabled us to remain connected with our family, our dear ones, our friends, even in these trying times from our home. Isn't this wonderful? So this is the thing I thought that I would like to start on a very positive note, saying that we are in good times despite challenges. And hence, I highlighted the word opportunities in the title of this key faculty development program to say that today we'll be talking more about opportunities. Please don't mind. In between, somewhere challenges do crop up, and we'll discuss challenges also. But our focus will be more on the opportunities for short term, opportunities for long term. So, let me give you a glimpse of the content I plan to cover with this warm up. We may have a small opportunity of quick brainstorming or some kind of the effort to get to know you better. I know this is digital platform and I'm not a digitally born person. I'm more closer to all genders and people who love to really meet face to face with our learners. And certainly will be constrained by this digital technology, not able to really interact with you such face to face at close quarters where I can grow closer to each of you. I can see your hands. I can listen to you. I can address your questions. So slightly, uh, I will face barriers to know you better, but nevertheless, we'll make small attempt. I don't know whether polling or hand raising or hand count anybody can do. And as I mentioned to you, is forgive me, I'm not born digital person. So I'm not very familiar with handling 10 things in digital world. Rather, I will restrict myself to largely to video and PowerPoint slides where I have, uh, will be communicating certain things. I hope each of you got a caselet. I'll be calling it the context caselet through which I'll be introducing the context competitiveness to each of you and one more elaborate reading where issues of institute growth are discussed. So title of my presentation will be on institute growth. By 
institute i'm using the word generic way to mean a school a department a institute a university or other organization i was going through the list of the participant and was very happy to see that there are diverse range of learners from north east south and west while many are from academia i could see some names from industry also maybe majority of you are from faculty side in academia and in this context i felt it is important for me to give you a context a bigger context of competitiveness as you go through this session you will learn that competitiveness has meaning at multiple levels and many of you would have read the case let and would be very clear that yes competitiveness can be talked about at country level it can be talked about at industry level it can be talked about at form level so i'm trying to make a connect with our organizations that is universities or institutes and their growth and form competitiveness and focus will be on getting the context right one unique uh, incident about my contribution to this faculty development program is i am a delight and i spent good part of my life in delhi as you came to know during introduction that i done my masters there and i spent more than a decade and a half as a core faculty at department of management studies at iit delhi was cars that's also a great place and i have very fond memories of launching my competitiveness related initiatives after i returned from university of toronto in 1995 as i try to introduce this very very useful concept of competitiveness in indian context we started with research we started with courses and after we pilot tested the courses in indian context we were open to share this knowledge with other universities guru govind singh indraprastha university which was named differently at that time was one of the pioneering universities and management schools which adopted competitiveness in its curriculum and the course was available for many faculty of that university to be taught to their colleges and their students so that way guru gobind singh university is one of the pioneering universities in northern india to have provided this opportunity of learning competitiveness to many of their faculty and students because of this connect with this university i was open to take this challenge of faculty development program i'm thank you in these trying times i'm refusing most of the invitations of all kinds because i have very limited the resources i'm able to bring it to home and i'm also a tremendous amount of work of the emergency situations so i refused to most of them but when prof sanina sin approached me that this is a faculty development program and would like to invite i uh, couldn't say no and i said that yes i will try i will try to share this context part this is a wonderful five day program with many distinguished speakers from india and many parts of world we are introducing you some fantastic topics my role in today's session is to give you the context in early part of this fdp so that as you learn about specialized topics related to covid 19 and world economy as you think about opportunities and challenges you can really relate it with a bigger context of competitiveness of country 
particularly India. So, the key objective is to give you the context of core concepts. I will introduce only few core concepts in today's session. One core concept I will introduce, I call it international competitiveness. I have added the word international here because while competitiveness can be discussed in local context also. Dr. So Nina Sina and his our team thought about global economy and international dimensions. And hence, I am emphasizing word international competitiveness here. I am introducing this context to improve sustainability. So that we can try to address the opportunities that can be created in new normal. Many of you must, must have heard that unlike 1990 or unlike World War II or unlike independence of India or unlike 1991 when we started liberalizing our economy, we have seen several changes. But many tell that that this new normal, this is new normal and this new normal, we call it COVID-19, is really different. It may have vast different kind of the challenges and opportunities for all of us. And hence, we often use the term new normal to refer to COVID-19. I will use that more generic term, I call it strategic discontinuity. I call COVID-19 as a strategic discontinuity because such discontinuities like 1973, which changed the world. The Middle East started emerging because of the OPEC price rise. Many countries suffered massively because oil prices went out of roof. These kind of events we call as strategic discontinuities and I call COVID-19 as a strategic discontinuity. We have several sub-objectives which can be listed as we'll get a glimpse of concept of corporate competitiveness, entrepreneurial mindset. To see the opportunities in the challenges, we need different kind of mindset. I call it entrepreneurial mindset and such mindset is necessary not only for survival of us, our students, our departments, but also the recovery and rebound in our departments to next levels. Sorry for disturbance. So we'll try to evolve the perspectives based on dialogue, examples, tasks, and we'll also give live case of some initiatives which we are using as an opportunity to return from the COVID-19 much faster, much better. I also have one interesting live case of IIT Bombay CSR and we'll use this live cases to evolve takeaways and roadmap for you. I use some acronyms to keep some of you awake. So please feel free to somebody who is monitoring the hand raise, etc. Uh, see or he can always pause me and clarify any acronym which is not clear to our approach to learning in this session will be mixed approach, it will be an interactive approach, although not as much interactive as I wish, but we'll be using different kind of the tools. Most important, we're using the context case let. Next, we'll spend some time, limited time on the reading about institute growth and industrial competitiveness. I wish that you focus on the PowerPoint slides. 
it will be shared letters so you need not try to write everything but yes you should take note of some important points also keep focus on the screen where readings are shared or caselets or reading can be shared and there can be some brainstorming or spot quizzes so this is the approach i'll be taking in today's session few norms for better e learning some of these norms may be little different because depending on the platform things may be different some sort or clarificatory questions on a slide are fine and mostly these questions will come to me by Professor Nina Sina or Amit Sharma or Professor Dipti or whoever is actually reading your chats can pause me. Please feel free to pause me in such technical ground. <coughs> However, we'll postpone the longer QA towards the end. Most of you may be muted. But you can try to communicate your key concerns to uh, other people who are monitoring the chat. We are running on borrowed technologies. When I say borrowed technologies, this hardware, software, platforms, video conferencing tools, a lot of things we are using are not technologies developed in India. And some of them can require a lot of bandwidth. We are lucky that we have reasonably good bandwidth in the last five years. Any bandwidth can still run short because today we have started consuming data at a massive pace. So to conserve the bandwidth, very, very important that video of most of you will be off. But you may use the chart as I mentioned. Now bear with me. Session I enjoy the most are face to face sessions in my senior executive programs, where apart from small group face to face interactions, LCD projector to project slides or videos, I use multiple boards to immediately seek ideas and take the ideas from the floor onto the whiteboards. Unfortunately, I, I can't use many such facilities. And hence, at time, if my interaction seems like a monologue, please bear with me. I'm very sorry for that. This session platform of WebEx is new to me, and many features are less known. So please bear if I I'm not able to listen to your chat, etc., very rapidly. There can be a quiz, so utilize your time on the context competitiveness caselet in case of any disturbance in the session. For example, I'm very sorry that we started late and we started late by a few minutes. I apologize personally for that. I'm very sorry. So, in between, also, because of whatever reasons. We in Mumbai often proudly tell that how stable the power is. In IIT, it's even more robust. We rarely see power cuts. I don't have any UPS and that kind of the equipment in my house because power cut is a rare, rare occurrence. Nevertheless, I've seen some occasional temporary power cuts in IIT Bombay campus, indicating that since this is a new normal, we should not be surprised by any disturbance which can come. So, in case if my video or my PowerPoint or my connection goes off for any reason, I urge you that do not get worried. You just open up your caselet, open up a case, and start reading them. We may find some very good insights when you go into these cases. At the same time, you must have pen and paper open. I urge that if you haven't, you may like to have a bottle of water with you so that you can have a sip or don't really, I mean, like, feel thirsty. I have a cup of 
LG Link. These are the luxuries of working from home, right? You can get plenty of uh, drinks and uh, food items whenever you want because you're working at home. You will never get such variety of food if you're working in office, right? So please feel free to go to your water or cup of tea. You can have a charger handy so that in case at any stage my battery or your battery runs out, you should be able to switch on immediately and get reconnected. Bottom line is that this is an entrepreneurial adventure, a very small adventure, but still I call it adventure. So please try to sail with me, if not jog with me. You'll get to know more about why do I use the word sail and jog, because I'm a great fan of jogging. I used to jog very regularly on campus. Now I'm not allowed to jog, but I'm sure that within few days, the campus will open up to jogging and I will resume my jogging and other passions which I really cherish in such campuses as IIT Bombay. So starter, uh, let me congratulate you first and foremost for your interest in learning and that too in these trying times. Some of you say sir, because we are sitting long hours at home, we are really bored. We watch a lot of movies, we play games, maybe even video games. And when we are bored, when such learning opportunity has come, we'll certainly grab it. I was very impressed when Professor Nina <coughs> asked for the question that how many participants are you likely to expect? And when she mentioned that, oh, more than 700 people have registered, I was very happy. I was very happy because many of us, like faculty, believe that I know everything I need to teach in the classroom. And why should I really go for faculty development program? Some of us may say that, yes, I can go face to face faculty development program at some other institutes such as IITs and other places. But I would not like to go through a virtual or EFDP. But still many of you have shown the interest indicating that you as colleagues are very keen to learn, learn something new. I congratulate you for being part of this unique program by Guru Gobind Singh in the first university. Because when I went through the topics and speakers, I was very happy that despite all constraints of not able to go to office and plan something, despite being virtual, they plan a very good program for you, a five day program with so many inputs. And you are fortunate one to have got opportunity to be selected for this. Not everybody who was interested or who registered got selected. It means that you are very, very lucky one who got selected and you are now started getting benefits of this FBP. Yesterday were two very exciting sessions after inaugural and today we are interacting on other important sessions. Professor Dipti or anybody uh, is around and is able to see chat? Yes, sir, we are able to see the chat. Right. So, by any chance, if I uh, uh, ask to do polling, would you be able to count the hands or something? Amit, sir, would you be able to help? Amit, sir. If I ask to raise hand on some question, will you be able to count hand or give opportunity to some of uh, them to speak? Uh, opportunity to yes, speak yes, by the host. Sorry. Uh, 
अपॉर्चुनिटी टू स्पीक कैन बी गिवन बाय द हाउस मैडम आप दे सकते हैं यस दैट कैन बी डन दैट कैन बी डन सो देन लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी इज एन दिस इज जनरली आई डू वेरी मच इन माय फर्स्ट सेशन ऑफ माय एग्जीक्यूटिव एजुकेशन और वी कॉल इट मैनेजमेंट डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम i try to know you i try to know you and that's what the acronym is that getting to know you creatively getting to know you creatively means that we try to know each of you unfortunately today i'm sure i will not do, not be able to know even five or 10 of you because i'm not actually i'm unable to see the kind of the live interaction nevertheless i have some questions and i only selected few little bit challenge questions so hand raise will be limited but anybody who has qualifies for that question uh, please do raise hands the first question is that is there uh, how many of you have experience of more than 4 months more than 4 months of working on entrepreneurial venture or startup Did you hear my question? I repeat. How many of you have opportunity of doing entrepreneurial venture or working in startup for more than four months in your long career so far? Please raise hands, and Professor Dipti or somebody will count and give me some answers to this question. in the meantime i will also raise the other question and so that other people who are not uh, have done this can, sir i can three i can see three hands very good they have mentioned that they have such experience very good so at least there are few people uh, uh, can we give opportunity to one of them to start be tell brief about what kind of venture she or he is currently active Or yes, sir. I will. I will give the opportunity to Mr. V K Vadwa, who is one of our faculty members with vast experience of uh, industry and promoting the startup. Wonderful. So, please uh, share your perspective in two minutes. See, uh, Mr. Vadwa, you have been I'll given speak. the permission. I'll speak. Very good. Yeah, we are listening you. Okay. That uh, any kind of entrepreneurship is essentially a thing where one wants to express his own creativity. Very so generally, generally, doing for somebody else because the object is to work for somebody else. Because when you are a servant or a even if you are a government servant, again you are after all a servant. to be on your own is the best actually i well. have experience i understand that why to work for somebody you work for self and then your motivation is very high very good that's what i would like to say thank you so you are connected with some venture activities at university and you are encouraging lot of students to take up entrepreneurship i had been i had been helping students to start their own things the entrepreneurship in the last in the last one month also i have been trying that the students should do their on their own Wonderful. i always encourage students to participate in any kind of entrepreneurial activity uh thank you mr vadwa uh sir would you like me to invite somebody else also uh hold on uh, we'll go to one uh, more question and then next one next one okay okay Okay. Carry the on. Right. The next question is about international part. The question is, how many of you have worked or played abroad for more than two months continuous? My work. I am saying that you went there and two months you have been in that country. Whether you taught, you learned, you did research. I want to see the hand raise. And understand that how many people have international exposure of at least two months? So Nina will say the answer. 
I don't see any hand raising, which is very surprising. Oh. There is one. There is one. Good. Hope that while all of you not slept, at least I am awake with my healthy dream. Uh, uh, can you please repeat the question? I will repeat. How many of you have worked or lived abroad for more than two months? Is the question more than two months? Is the question clear to you, Professor Nina? I can see five hands. Very good. Uh, so it seems that we have got uh, 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 more hands in second question, indicating that while entrepreneurship, the uh, numbers were a bit less, but then at least uh, many of you some international exposure. And this is the one opportunity I want you to flag now because such kind of the strategic discontinuity don't come. They often come once in lifetime. Since they bring challenges, they also open up opportunity. So I remember that thousands of workers, still workers from our country and abroad, not to USA or Germany or Finland. They went to near countries such as Middle East. They may have single skill or carpenter or welder or mason. But based on the single skill, they got the opportunity. They went there after strategic discontinuity of 1973. And many of them made a good living there. They earned quite a lot. And they repatriated surplus amount back home for their families. And a lot of reserve, which our Reserve Bank of India is loosening its purse these days for a lot of government efforts to really help us are built through the hard work of these workers, indicating that these workers in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s went to different parts of the world. And today, we have a reasonably comfortable reserve to really address this crisis is because of such kind of the forex earnings by individuals. So why I'm telling this point, I'm a small person. Professor Deepi introduced me, and maybe uh, some of you might have got the feeling that I have done a lot of things, but I'm playing with you. I'm a small person and a beginner learner with limited knowledge and experience. Just 2.5 decades post my PhD. But I have very interesting, unique experience of quarter century of working with Japan. Not continuously for uh, two months, etc. But I've done two major immersions of one year period in Japan, and I visited that country for more than a dozen times. So some of my views will be very different because today in India, where English is the dominant language of education, including management education, and most of our learnings come from Western knowledge sources such as Harvard, I will be presenting some views which are very different. Some of these views can be harsh, a bit harsh, but intent is very noble. So please bear with me and uh, please uh, understand that you can benefit maximum from my such questions because I will be bringing this unique perspective. Before I go to myself, let me introduce IIT Bombay differently. A few minutes before, there was a question about startups and ventures. IIT Bombay, along with other IITs such as IIT Delhi, IIT Rurki, IIT Madras, IIT Karakpur, etc., those all IITs are known to be large IITs, which has more than 10,000 students. But 
IIT Bombay has changed a lot. Are you able to see this slide? Are you able to see the slide? Yes. yes, we are able to see. Right. So you must be able to see many different centers. And these we call as a research centers. To just give you one example, that five years before IIT Bombay energy related thing. So this uh, center about uh, national solar thermal research and testing facility was uh, thought about. But a separate center was created. We call it as this NCPRE. That is for National Center for Photovoltaic Research and Engineering. And this center involved more than 50 faculty from different departments. And within five years, with very intense efforts of the faculty, students, and other researchers, IIT Bombay uh, massively increased its capabilities in this area of renewable energy. So why I'm giving this example? Because IITs has been transforming, changing from a training and teaching or education institutes. IITs are transforming to become research-based educational institutions. And this is just a glimpse of more than 20 centers which are already operational on campus and many more centers uh, will come up in next 10 years. So whenever you are able to come to IIT Bombay for some kind of the program, I will be happy to give you a live vision of one or two such centers to tell that how I mean, like IIT Bombay is changing. One very important thing here is something called business, technology business incubator. And IIT Bombay has one of the India's top technology business incubator where our startups and ventures are nurtured. So such kind of the uh, things will help our institute to really change, to change with the kind of the crisis which are facing today. Today, out of this men, more than 100 ventures, I recently heard that around seven to eight ventures have already come out with a product or something related to COVID-19 crisis. It means that it will help with either some kind of the diagnostic or certain kind of the other processes so that uh, IITs can contribute to their share to this COVID crisis. Now, I'm giving you a different picture. This, I bring it because it's a kind of the millennial picture. Some of you have, may not able to understand this language, which is pictographs. This language is Japanese language. But the heading clearly says that this is a QA session. Post the plenary presentation, I was invited at the ASEAN Academy of Management International Conference. This conference is ASEAN Academy of Management. It rotates among the ASEAN countries. But in the millennium year, it went to Japan. And I was invited to give a plenary address. And I bring this slide as one of the best slide because I never done such kind of the Q&A. Despite doing many, many keynote and plenary addresses at many conferences. So this slide may help you to ask some sharper questions. Well, insight from our unique experiments in East Asia over decades can be of some help to you. Some of you may be aware that this crisis started in East Asia started in China and ultimately spread slowly to nearby countries such as Korea and other things. And ultimately it has touched most of the countries in the world. But some of you must be carefully watching that what happened in Europe, what happened in North America. Relatively, East Asia escaped the crisis much faster. And it hints at the reasons that there must be some different kind of the knowledge and execution and capabilities in these countries that South Korea, Korea came out from this crisis very, very best impacted. Taiwan and Hong Kong has done great job. Even Japan, which is a larger democratic country, is some blues, but is coming out quite well. So these are the insights from East Asia, which are building on in previous session. And hence, I wish you to really uh, keep this in mind as I express my views. So let me present you one picture about world university rankings. Such rankings such as QS are now becoming well known in India. 
and look at the picture and look at the condition of India. In QS rankings, we are very happy that we have around eight universities in top 500, but we still have a university to enter in top 100. Sorry for a bit dated information, but nevertheless, these rankings and comparison with three other Asian countries will give you the clue. For example, Korea is a much, much smaller country, but Korea had 18 institutions and four in top 100. Japan had five in top 100. Of course, US has larger numbers, but we all know that US universities are known and we know the educational strength of US for a long time, but we are not that much aware about educational strengths of uh, countries in the East Asia. So, do you see opportunity for Indian universities? Why brought this slide? Because I want to tell you that there is enormous opportunity for India. These numbers, 8 can easily go to 16 or 24 or even 32 in next few years. Similarly, this 0 can become 1 or 2 or 3. ARW is academic ranking of all universities. This is little tougher ranking because you can see that while we had 8 in US, we are only 1 in ARW. So it is tough game. But nevertheless, India can climb in this game also where South Korea has 12 universities and Japan has 17 universities in ARWU. You can see that China has surged ahead of both or all the three Asian countries and soon there will be not be any match for China in such kind of the rankings. So I hope that you got the feel for a major opportunity that this crisis like COVID-19 crisis will come and go. Maybe we lose one year or two year or five years of time depending on how resilient our institution is. For example, IIT Bombay would be one of the worst affected IITs because lockdown in Mumbai will continue for much longer than many other cities. It means that IIT Bombay will certainly suffer in restarting and rebooting its academy to perfect levels of pre-COVID crisis. Nevertheless, we believe that we will try because the opportunity for us is so huge. By growth, I don't want to only tell about the growth in number of students, but growth can be in terms of a lot of quality parameters, such as quality of our teaching, quality of our research, quality of our outreach, and many other opportunities. So, did you got the feel for opportunity, which is staring at us in terms of academic world? Any question or comment here? So, I'm looking at the watch and uh, I'm sorry that we have gone a bit slow. I do have. No, there is no question so far. If there will be a question, I will interrupt. Fine, fine. Thank you, ma'am. So then let's go to the caselet. Uh, first caselet is the context caselet. Are you able to see my screen? I open up the caselet. Uh, not yet, not yet. Not yet. I can uh, see the patch. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I will, uh, I will, I think I'll have to reset it on the, uh, on the tool. Give me a minute. Just a minute. Huh? Just a minute. I'm sorry. This tool is new to me. When is the WebEx control? Can you? I think you are trying to, trying to share the full screen. Right. Uh, no, that's the control of the WebEx. Uh, 
WebEx console. Oh, just a minute, just a minute. Now I get it. Yeah. Just a minute. Share my screen. Okay. Just a minute. I think yes. Um, okay. Uh, are you able I can to see. My, are, you, uh, about, are you able to see the case there? Yes, we can see it. Very good. So, uh, thank you for uh, patience. I'm sorry for technical glitch. I request each of you to open up this PDF file. There are two PDF files shared with you. Other PDF files. Sir, can... sir, there is a question. Would you like to answer it right away or should we wait for uh, the session to continue? As I mentioned that if it is a question on a slide, I would like to take immediately. Yeah, can you okay. the question? Yes, the question is what measures can be taken for us to be into the QS and other ranking? So that's a very good question. <laughs> and uh, I will uh, try to take it up uh, towards end, but quick answer is that that there are a lot of measures which government like MHRD and then uh, other governments are taking. Our own uh, universities are well aware about this ranking because this ranking will decide that a uh, lot of uh, things like student uh, via track and other things. So I personally believe that most of the leaders in the universities and governments are aware about our uh, need to really having some good contribution in this ranking. And we are moving up on this ladder, for example, IIT Bombay has climbed up from uh, uh, close to 200 ranks to, I mean, like uh, 190, 180, 170, 160, 150. And now in the, we are in the first half of uh, 1 to 150. So uh, question is very good. And certainly, as you go through these caselets and case, you will get a lot of answers to that. So please hold on. Are you all able to see this caselet? In parallel, yes. I also, yes, have, sir. We have also shared with you this uh, uh, case, which is about institutional growth and industrial competitiveness. So this is the actual case of IITs, focusing on select institutions such as IITs. So these two are the major reasons for today's session. I request you to keep both of them open and focus on whichever one we are discussing at given point of time. So now we'll be starting the context case let. Whenever I tell the word context caselet, I'm referring to this particular context caselet. Please open it. Please slide through the whole caselet so that you get familiar with the tables and figures and be ready to answer any question which I will pose to you. Clear? So, uh, Professor Sina, uh, be ready for a little uh, head count to get me to feel that uh, how, are, uh, how are we doing in terms of uh, participation and uh, time so uh, I am going back to PowerPoint to start with uh, initial question how many of you read it and uh, in case I ask some uh, questions. Uh, uh, right now right now slide share is not on okay um, oh I'm, I'm sorry so maybe huh. right, I will have to switch, uh, switch switch the application no problem I will uh, this uh, switching uh, doesn't happen as smoothly as PowerPoint but I, I'll go back. Uh, are you able to see PowerPoint now? Yes. Are you able to see the slide? Context case led, institute growth and firm competitiveness? Uh, we are only seeing one. That is how many? Yeah, how many could you read? Right. Good. So while I assume that you have PDF about this case led, which is in PDF, is open in your other tab, but I will be guiding you through this particular PowerPoint slide. So please bear with me this jugglery. Generally, I switch over between the PowerPoint and PDF very smoothly in my LCD, but then it will not be so smooth here. So I'm sure many of you read it, and uh, some of you must have read it thoroughly. And I'll be asking you some simple questions. Let, let's take some one or two quick views of uh, what is this slide about? Professor uh, uh, Sina, you can do a hand raise let them see. one minute of answers you can take from audience English part yeah. anybody like to say uh, Mr. Neeraj Pathak very good 
Yeah. Can you please uh, answer sir's question? What is your view? What do you what do you see in this case that? Mr. Neeraj Pathak, are you there? Okay, we can go to alternate person. Hello. Yeah. Are you yes, there? please go ahead. Actually, I could see this. Uh, there is written how many of you could read and share views. It means uh, how many are attentive to this these slides or uh, the view which or the context context which a speaker wanted to share with the uh, with uh, the audience yeah thank you uh, thank you so let's uh, move fast this case let has a lot of content uh, the, one of the fastest way to reach the case let is reading the tables and figures so let's go to table one i urge each of you to shift to table one and tell me that what do you see in table one? Do you see some country competitive ranking? No. Okay, let me explain by going to, going to uh, PDF. So if you go to table one on your slides, and in table one, you see the country competitiveness rankings of India with select countries. Are you able to see that? Able to see the country competition? Yes, they are mentioning that they are able to see that. Right. So you see that there are select countries. The country competitiveness rank as per national competitiveness research is given. And you can see that India is ranking there. Of course, other countries rank is also there. You can see that USA is uh, top rank for a long time. But let's focus our discussion on ranks for India. I want to hear one or two views about uh, what do you feel about India's rank in country competitiveness. Very bold views. Professor, Professor Mobaya, we are again seeing the blank screen. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. The patch is coming up. Uh, just sorry, uh, just one minute. Are you able to see Adobe? Yes, now we can see table one. Very good. So let's focus on table one. Uh, because of slightly paucity of time, I will rush through. But let me interpret the table for you. What you see here is that the India's country competitiveness rank, which was in the 40s, in the 2003 2005 time. We jumped to 2033 and we jumped to 22 by 2018. Between 2005 and 2009, there was jump, massive jump of almost 19 rank. Now, this is a very, very massive jump for a country of 134 people. Climbing up this ladder is not easy because some of you have read the case and we know that. Rankings are not based on 1, 2, 10, 20 criteria. These rankings are based on more than 200 criteria. So, since rankings are based on more than 200 criteria, it is not easy for a country to improve on 200 criteria so easily, or even 50 of them. So, ranking is based on Professor Porter's diamond framework of competitiveness. And when a country of size of the India, which is 130 crore people, can climb 19 ranks in just a span of five years. It is a massive, massive jump. In fact, I'm very proud about that jump done by India. Now let's look at table two. Are you able to see table two? Again, select countries are there. And this table, the caption is trends in players from select countries in business Olympics. This year, was Olympic year and I love Olympics because Olympics gives us opportunity to understand that which countries are ahead in sports. But when we talk about economy, we are talking about business Olympics because in global economy, not countries but companies compete. This is a picture of the companies. 
what are, what are these numbers for example in 2005 india's number is 8 have you heard about something called global 500 so this global 500 is the world's top 500 companies it's published by a us magazine it's published every year and i eagerly wait to look at this magazine whenever it's published because i immediately get the fill for number of companies contributed by india in this global 500 so this eight six seven eight how is the trend is the trend very stable or we are down or we are improving look at the other picture it's highlighted in bold china so in 2005 2005 china was just eight companies ahead of us by 2017 china is more than 100 companies ahead of us so through these tables there is a lot of text in the case lab, but through these tables i am presenting to you a very contrasting picture i call countries such as india of 130 crore people climbing up in country competitiveness ranks i call it elephants dancing because that country competitiveness rank is based on 200 criteria and india is a kind of the elephant size country but still india is climbing up that in this there is only single criteria this ranking global 500 is based on single criteria it means that a company such as tata motors if it improves its sales to enter the ranking let's say that tata motors was 20 billion company to enter the global 500 you need 30 billion Tata Motors did a major acquisition in Europe. Now it is more than 40 billion company. Tata Motors enters the list. It means that just on single criteria, if a company improves, it can enter the list. So similarly, there was acquisition by Tata Steel. There was there can be acquisition by TCS. There can be acquisition by Mahindra's, Birla's, Ambani's, and so many other industrial large industrial companies in India means that if these companies improve on single criteria that is sales revenue we call it top line then they can enter the list despite such an opportunity to improve on single criteria only eight companies are remaining them and most of these companies are actually public center public sector enterprises it means a huge opportunity for indian companies to enter this so i am now using an analogy and I want you to listen very carefully. This analogy, I call it as elephant dancing and rabbit sleeping. I repeat, I call it elephant dancing and rabbit sleeping. Because to me, this company with a chairman and CEO and mission and vision are the small entities. The biggest one of them may not have even 5 lakh people as compared to 130 crore for India. These companies have very strong business motivation but despite that if they are not climbing up on the ladder of competitiveness as well as an elephant i am using this quote and i want you to write down and remember it think it over it for a long time that elephants can dance elephant is dancing and in covid era we are seeing the same thing on good news india has started missions such as the bharat mission where india is trying to bring back the Indians in distress from the different parts of the world. Perhaps this is one of the world's largest evacuation program ever done. Neither USA, nor Russia, nor Germany, nor UK, nor France, nor Italy, nor Japan, nor China has evacuated such large number of people from the different corners of the world. And just this one day Bharat mission has just started. And we are every day, we are seeing hundreds and thousands of people returning back to India we are able to really rescue what i want to say that again in covid era times elephant is dancing but opportunity is not only for elephant opportunity is only also for rabbits and these rabbits can dance so in one slide i show universities i gave you picture of universities where you could see that there are only zero universities in top 100 or there are only eight or ten universities in top 500 it means that the situation for universities is also similar to companies. 
you could have 20 universities, you could have 30 universities, you could have 40 or 50 universities in that list, but we don't have. So I don't call it as a challenge, but I call it as opportunity. Don't say that we can't. If we think, if we think differently in such trying times, we can climb. The rest part of this caselet has a lot of ideas about what can be the role. Uh, first of all, it's saying that why this opportunity and why this opportunity now? Because such millennium opportunities don't come every year or every decade. These opportunities come every 20, 30, 40 years. And hence, we should really think differently despite all difficulties, challenges, crises. We certainly firefight on those crises. If I don't have food in the table, I will try to go and stand in the queues and get the food. But after I got the food, again, I should start thinking differently that how can we really think long term about this opportunity? Technology innovation can play a very important role. At IITs, we have programs on management of technology and innovation. We call it by acronym MOT. And such kind of the innovation mindset, the mindset of the startups, which Professor Vadwam highlighted, need to be inculcated in our students. Because in new era, we may not be able to create so many jobs for each of them. Those high paying jobs in MNCs and other large companies will not be created. But students who are able to think creatively, are able to think innovatively, will find, create opportunities for themselves and for their friends. So I also listed some emerging opportunities in COVID-19 times. I let you people read. Last but not the least, there are questions given there. Some are basic questions and some are challenge questions. So in your uh, peaceful time, I urge you to read the start from the basic questions first and then challenge practical tasks. If you go through, you will think a lot of opportunities. Uh, last but not the least in this case, let, there are working definitions given of the key terms. And there is a table where there is a quick benchmarking of two companies. This is very fundamental uh, skill in competitiveness courses. We call it benchmarking. A benchmarking. Here, we have named the companies as Puri and Boni. These are the real companies, but we have to hide the names because of the, our uh, every, uh, consent with the company. Then you can see 10 years picture, how this company is doing in terms of the top line, net sales or bottom line, such as profit or R&D expenditure and all these things. And then if you go detail, there is a near comparison. So for example, R&D expenditure in terms of total expenditure, and percentage how the puri and morning doing are given here so if you go through such details you can immediately find out that oh puri is consistently spending whereas boni is not so consistent in spend so you don't only spend when crisis hit you or when you have some big profit in here you have to spend consistently if you want to innovate and if you want to innovate on technological fronts on product front new products then you have to do it very consistently so this is the very uh, uh, not sell the message from this caselet. Uh, I would uh, move it faster because I'm very sorry that uh, we are moving a bit slow and uh, we will uh, run, out, uh, run out of time. So I will go back to PowerPoint. Sir, that is not a problem. Uh, but still, we can uh, continue. Uh, uh, how, how much extra time uh, can we continue? How much time would you like to have? Uh, uh, just a minute, I know that I'm uh, standing between uh, all of you lunch and uh, you are at home. <laughs> you cannot say that uh, your family members will be waiting for a lunch. So maybe I will take some 10 minutes, uh, uh, 10 minutes extra at least. You are welcome, sir. Okay, I'm going back to PowerPoint and I will uh, go through very fast from these uh, slides. So we have got the very important message about competitiveness where you learned that competitiveness has relevance at multiple levels, country level, industry level, and firm level. We have got a picture of uh, country competitiveness where we have very optimistic picture, and that is continue to improve because we have a very proactive government which is working very hard. But we have a bigger opportunity as well as challenge at the firm level competitiveness, and that's why uh, our focus in this research is on the firm level competitiveness. Uh, I will go to now the next slide about the second case. I will move it very fast. I will skip this definition of competitiveness since the day. 
this is like running the case that so but you can see some examples of uh, leading companies of india which are trying to be very competitive such as uh, Paints, bharat force in the pharmaceutical iocl lupin Manindra, ONDC. sir blank yeah. screen is coming blank yeah. screen is coming thank you sorry for uh telling this i'm sorry just give just me Yes, now we can see. Is it a full screen now? Yes. Very good. Sorry for, the, sorry for missing that out. So there are examples of companies. These are just examples. The examples are from the Indian companies and other examples are from the international companies. I'll be sharing this slide with you, so no need to worry about noting these points. Let's go to the next uh, uh, point about the uh, second reading, which is about institute growth and competitiveness. Time is less. I will not uh, go to each question, but to give you a nutshell, I'm telling that that particular reading is giving a picture of connect between institute growth. By institute growth, I mean that institute can grow quantitative wise. For example, IIT Bombay had less than 5,000 students 10 years before. Today, we have more than 10,000 students. It means that we have certainly grown by quantity. We also want to grow by quality. So the question is that how the growth of our institute can be measured? Then we have given the view about what is competitiveness and why competitiveness in that thing. And then we have connected it with the second bubble. So if you go to figure one in that case that uh, I'm not switching because of, we are losing a lot of time in the switchovers. There is a figure which connects the institute growth with industrial competitiveness. The message we are trying to tell is that well, institutes are growing, let's say, by 50% or 20% or 30% in terms of number of students. But if our com companies are not growing, as you could see that our companies are stagnated at 8, 6, 7. We should have been growing 10% at least every year, but we are not able to grow 10%, even in that contribution, right? It means that somewhere our companies are stagnating, our industrial competitiveness is suffering. So if our institutes grow and if our firm competitiveness in our institutional competence doesn't grow, then there is a disconnect. And many of you in academia are very well know about this disconnect, that we are nurturing the talent, somehow this talent tries to enter these companies, but still competitiveness of the companies is not growing that fast. So these opportunities provide us a window of opportunity. When within one or two years, some companies enter global 500 or global 2000, how they may be able to enter this? Because they, Snatch on the opportunity. For example, company which is able to make ventilators, or company which finds out the vaccine for COVID-19, or company which has a therapy for COVID-19. If that company will grow drastically because that company has found an opportunity of solution to our major problem, right? So I want such kind of the connect happen. Uh, one of the major point in that particular case led is a technique we call as a problem structuring. Whenever problems come, we should understand the problem. For example, we face financial problems in these time days. We face major problem of health. For example, some of us can be not be very healthy and we cannot even uh, do anything in this time. We cannot go to hospital. It means that we will, we are facing a lot of problems. And, but these are personal problems. I am referring to problems of institutes will face massive problems for COVID era. Those institutes which are not able to uh, reboot themselves or not able to uh, return to normal operations may lose, uh, if not uh, worry, lose, they may not be able to attract more students in coming year because students will perceive that this institute is not able to start the e-learning. This institute is not able to provide them the option of alternative way of. So for example, we may face some major uh, loss of a number of students in our institute or uh, we uh, may have even loss of some of the staff members and all these kind of the problems will come. So technique of problems, which is a four step process, starting from the problem statement, unwanted symptoms or goals blocked, root cause analysis, and finally ambiguities. These four steps are demonstrated by actually a live example of IITs in that case. So I urge you to read that case and understand 
and that's a classic case which we widely use in many courses and i i'm sure that you will learn the technique of problem structuring if you go through the appendix of that particular reading so let me now go through uh, some very important uh, uh, message and takeaways from today's session and then uh, road ahead for us so i will not read this slide but this slide we have highlighted the contributions of our team our team i mean the group on competitiveness uh, i highlighted the setting up of uh, lab the lab we call as the strategy and competitiveness lab at iit delhi's department of management studies and this lab became the hub of our research there at peak uh, we had around seven to eight research scholars and five to six other staff members working in this lab so through such kind of the labs we are trying to create the momentum about competitiveness research and knowledge creation in this country during this lab uh, through this lab we have created tremendous amount of knowledge for example we graduated more than eight phds in competitiveness for related areas and because of that lab the ncr region is still leading i am very proud that ncr region is still leading in competitiveness research in india as compared to bangalore or hyderabad or chennai or bombay or kolkata or uh, uh, other cities because uh, ncr region has many experts some of these phds we graduated now faculty members or uh, leaders in the corporate world and they are the leading their companies towards better competitiveness or uh, their institutions uh, now we are uh, mentoring highly energetic youth and building institutional strength at iit bombay which is the next destination where i was invited to initiate the competitiveness uh, mission so we have uh, courses initiated we have now multiple courses being tested we have research initiated we are doing the management development programs and uh, because of this ours is one of the most conscientious and contributing research group on competitiveness in india the kind of the contributions we have made in research term is uh, very very significant and we are continuing on this mission um, in terms of the academic opportunities for your academic growth there will be traditional opportunities for example many of you are attempting e classes you may face some major challenges there uh, uh, in learning and some of you may drop these e classes if the again we back to normal classes in next year but i urge that don't drop the classes learn the lessons from whatever experiment and fine tune your experiment so that you can uh, whenever we face such similar classes again we should be able to have a smoother switch over to e classes uh, hybrid uh, e classes for emergencies but balancing with face to face interactions is going to be better approach so there are platforms such as swayam platform uh, nptel platform these platforms have plenty of good courses so whenever you feel that you are not able to reach out to your students some of you may like to select such good courses in the such platforms and let your students learn on their own and you can do limited uh, interaction sessions on digital channels with them here open source can help so while we are today we are interacting on a platform we call as webex but these platforms are very costly platforms not all institutions will be able to afford it and even if you get the permission for one year uh, next year you may not get the permission to subscribe it because this platform cost will continue to increase so i urge you to look for open source platform so that your cost can be contained we need to build a lot of skills uh, in terms of not only i'm mean, like doing this kind of the monologue but having a lot of digital content i'm sorry that today i couldn't show you videos or cartoons or many other kind of animations but we will have to develop this kind of the uh, more interactive content uh, where management of technology can play a role we will have to use technology for that but we need not uh, use very costly and imported technologies if we use indigenous technologies open source technologies then our cost of this technology platform for our digital learning can be minimized else we can get locked into a costly inputs that we cannot sustain uh, a lot of indigenous approaches uh, are being developed and i will give you uh, one example live example of indigenous approach which we are done uh, in india and it is really helping us a lot so let me highlight some takeaways and door ahead i will uh, let you read take it as a signal from mother earth that uh, whatever human beings we are doing 
is not very sustainable and hence we need to think very differently. Institute building is a very challenging task and uh, not all of us will get opportunity to really start it at from top, uh, top down. So we can start at bottom up, we can start at our group level, department level and as we learn we can try to really diffuse it among other, many other departments. Growth and competitiveness are highly linked and exciting areas. Um, uh, not that because uh, we are working on these areas, but uh, we are uh, trying very hard. And I personally have learned that explicit focus on competitiveness can help. For example, because we started the competitiveness, some of our students have got 2x to 5x opportunities in their career. They really climbed to very, very senior positions at vice president level. Because we, they got the gist of the competitiveness to one or two courses we offered them. There are many, many myths about competitiveness. For example, competitiveness is not competition. It is much, much more than competition. Competition is all around. In post-COVID era, in international market, there will be very stiff competition from many countries. Even in traditional areas such as textile and handlooms and all these things, you will find that while India's supply chains are broken, supply chains from Korea or Vietnam or China are already running and they will eat up our market share. Uh, technological innovation and commercialization is very important for differentiation but it is a must and it is much much bigger than cost competitiveness. So the bottom line message I'm giving you that we are live. We are in the learning uh, institutions and uh, this life has to be much, much more than COVID-19. So don't get distracted by COVID-19 crisis. Think long term and you define competitiveness and growth very carefully for your group, your institution, your uh, management school or department. Uh, if you wish to measure uh, relevant things to aid in strategic decisions. Encourage team fitness if your team needs to climb heights. And I'll give you some examples of that. I started the IIT Bombay Biathlon. And uh, the, one of the main objectives of such biathlon is to have fit and healthy uh, students uh, who can have higher immunity so that they can fight such kind of the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemics much more uh, easily. Um, takeaways for us as researchers and teachers. Again, I let you read. Uh, will highlight uh, one or two points. Minimize the adverse impact of extremes. Uh, this digital lock-ins, our dependence on uh, digital tools such as WhatsApp and Google can sometimes uh, really make us uh, vulnerable to digital distress on our shoulders, on our eyes, on our hands, and other parts of the body. So I urge you that uh, learn to digital detox and some time to detoxicate from your digital uh, load. And uh, it reminds me of uh, one very important uh, quote. I written it in Marathi here. Tuj ai tuja silpkar or bhagya nirmata. It means that we are the role models for our students. We are the, we are the uh, uh, shapers of uh, uh, our students' character. And uh, students learn much more from our behaviors and misbehaviors than our teaching. So we have a very big responsibility in these times when students are learning from us. Uh, we should be role models. We should try to do better things. So I'm sure that this COVID crisis has taught us a lot about discipline. Many of Indians, I never seen Indians so disciplined way doing things. So let's try to be disciplined followers. If we are not able to try to be role models in some aspects, uh, for example, uh, lean challenger with the X by three. What do I mean by this? As I mentioned that I'm small person, but I'm one of the lean person. And as you saw that, I take the challenges in toughest context such as Japan. And we are trying to take these challenges with now one third of the resources which we used to do when I was in Canada. What I'm saying that the difficult times teach us to do things with less, and if we learn to do with less, we can still take the toughest challenges and achieve our goals. Um, these are the slides about road ahead I'll share with you. 
I feel that uh, 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 this is the live example of the journal which we launched on competitiveness from India, and uh, we were trying to take it international. When we are taking it international in this year, the headwinds have come, and these are against us. Our researchers, our reviewers, our uh, uh, supporting staffs, uh, with staff which are in different countries, all are disturbed, if not uh, disrupted. But nevertheless, we set the target of actually doubling up this particular journal, uh, at least have 50% extra work done in this year. So these are the live example of setting our targets higher, even in the year where we are facing this COVID crisis. Uh, I will uh, skip this slide and then I feel that uh, we should open up uh, floor for some questions because we have missed on uh, many of their questions. So let's take some questions now. I'm very sorry for uh, delaying Q and A. Thank you so much. Now I will uh, take some of the question. Uh, one important question that has come up is that uh, is there a linkage? Because we are not doing well in primary education, therefore uh, the competitiveness of institution at the higher education level is not uh, up to our expectation. Very good question. Uh, so whenever we talk about education, the primary education is the starting point. And uh, uh, there are certain challenges at that level. For example, in cities like Delhi, Mumbai, we might have a lot of uh, public schools. There may be very good uh, private schools, the government schools, all kinds of schools are there. But uh, despite best of efforts of uh, governments, parents, uh, uh, schools, still there can be gaps in uh, learning primary school level. I want to worry about the IQ part of our students because I feel that the students we get, I mean, I'm not saying because of IIT Bombay, IQ of our students is really good. But I feel that primary education is the foundation of the character, foundation of the discipline, like values of the school, uh, our children, and most importantly, foundation of the health of the students. So I feel that there is problem, a bigger problem is on the health of our students and their uh, values rather than on the IQ and the knowledge and information. To me, that's bigger problem. And uh, uh, but it doesn't do not stop us. So if I find that my students are not healthy, it doesn't mean that I don't take initiative like biathlon to improve the health. I still take whatever I can correct during the two years time here. I do take this initiative. So we should try to, to understand the gaps and improve on those. I hope you address the question. We can go for other questions. Yes, uh, this is a question from uh, Dr. Kulveen Trehan. And she is from the background of mass communication and journalism. But she is asking, is the ease of doing business linked to our uh, competitiveness? Very good question. Uh, there is a linkage. For example, if you take the example of startups and ventures, the ease of doing business, if it improves, our ventures can uh, start early. They can go to etc. But there is a very big difference. Ease of doing business is on a market side, whereas competitiveness is on the capability side. So let me give you a simple example. Ease of doing business is not only for Indians. It's also for international competitors. So if ease of doing, doing business improves, a lot more competition can come to India. Now, we assume that if competition comes, we can become competitive. For example, if uh, 100 million, uh, 2 million Chinese workers entered the entered India, and Indian workers will become competitive and they will do better work. But that may not be Typically, we assume that more competition means improving competitiveness, but that's not true. Hence, I will say that there is a small linkage between ease of doing business, but it's very, very limited linkage. We should not really get uh, too much uh, happy about ease of doing business, but we should be happy if you are improving on the competitiveness range. You can go for more. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Mr. Vinayak Jump. Uh, he is asking that uh, over competitiveness of the firm has been restricted by various set of laws in India, particularly Competition Act. So, your comments about it? Very good question. I'm very uh, 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 there are audience members which are amazingly, amazingly knowledgeable people, and they are asking very, very sharp questions. 
uh, yes, competition commission. Yes, we can say that uh, there is need for fair competition, and without fair competition, uh, there can be some problems. So competition commission was initiated and it is doing very good job. It is time to see that uh, uh, unfair competition doesn't happen. But be very careful that, for example, we can uh, uh, apply this thing to our cement industry or our uh, FMCG industry or our uh, automotive industry or other industries. But we cannot apply it to Google and WhatsApp, which are almost uh, having monopoly power in Indian market and so many other countries, right? So nobody can control them. Uh, so it means that there may not be any control on the uh, competition from the international market. But if we over constrain internal competition, it can happen that our companies cannot compete because they cannot become Google or WhatsApp. But Google and WhatsApp can come and overpower our companies. We are already seeing that, for example, Flipkart is overtaken by Walmart. So in our now e-commerce, the competition is between two American companies, Amazon and Walmart. But if you can say that, oh, no, no, uh, Indian uh, DMART and other people uh, cannot be allowed to become large because then they will become monopolized or oligopolistic and we really uh, contain them, then they will not be able to compete against the Walmart and uh, uh, Amazon, which will ultimately overpower the largest Indian companies. We have seen in telecom, DSN was the largest. It, is, it was overpowered. Uh, and then a the lot of international competition came from AT&T to British Telecom to Dutch Telecom to Docomo and Singtel and other companies. So what I want to say that that uh, we should be very careful that over uh, 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 regulation can uh, be risky in several industries. It depends on industry by industry. Some more questions? Yes. Uh the question is again that uh, the biggest challenge to teaching practical subject how do we manage teaching practical subject through the virtual platforms uh, very question it is uh, tougher it is uh, tougher to give me a live example uh, i take some interns during summer and uh, generally i in, uh, involve, uh, insist on very daily face to face meetings to give them the because within one month we want to do them some most toughest pro uh, projects this year uh, we took some uh, three interns uh, despite i was very hesitant because i that i cannot now provide this kind of the boot camps and training to them but we started on a virtual mode and i am trying to motivate them so important thing in virtual mode is that you lose this control right because you now cannot shift them face to face you cannot mentor them face to face but uh, if the student is motivated then the students will learn so here in case i am busy with so many changes is now that i'm not able to give time daily time to them i give them only time twice or twice a week on select slot but still i am able to mentor them because uh, my students are interested so in a virtual world I feel that if you have to give more uh, control to our students, that if they become motivated, if they are interested, if they are keen, then uh, we can uh, impart good learning to them in virtual mode. Because our students are very brilliant. They are more brilliant than us. So if they are interested in learning, our role is not to give them the A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Only in a kind of flip mode. We only give them limited thing. And for example, today, I'm realizing that you have learned a lot. I, uh, in fact, I almost, uh, I feel that I have shown for you. I have shown you too many slides. I shouldn't have shown. Uh, but then uh, I'm not able to see hand raise and all these things. So I couldn't have more dialogue in the class. It means that you are a very good learner and you learn a lot through digital channels. So, it's possible. But we have to innovate. So, if you permit, then there is a last question. Uh, sure. Why we are, uh, you know, what will be the post COVID situation of pro or anti China and make in India? And this question comes from uh, Nikhil Patel. Uh, thank you, uh, Nikhil. A very good question. Um, I know that uh, uh, China is becoming a very uh, major target for uh, anything, whether it happens in USA or India or any part of the world and uh, uh, partly china is uh, responsible also because uh, china has uh, created the trade deficits with so many countries it has dumped so many 
products on so many countries that uh, we should feel that uh, what should we do but i will not like to really point fingers uh, at outside uh, any outside country i would point fingers at myself because i know that when i'm pointing finger at you four fingers are pointing at me so uh, we are responsible uh, if you remember this quote that uh, you to uh, to the acha sekar that quote says that we are what we are if we are not so competitive we don't want to compete uh, we are not able to really compete against china or uh, us or uh, uh, taiwan or japan or uh, germany because we have not developed our competitiveness so i strongly believe in this point that rather than worrying too much about china or us or any other country we should worry about ourselves our own immunity our family immunity in this time of crisis then when you whenever you feel that you are now safe and you can try to help some then help our students like i'm trying to help these scholars my intern and more really get the confidence that the trend that yes they will survive they will stand up we all have fallen there's no doubt about that we all have fallen but we should stand up again we should start jogging and at some day we should be able to run also and if we run faster than china uh, surely we will not have any fear about uh, china so my approach is very different and i think that this is the approach which korea taiwan japan and uh, many other countries who face the chinese threats have done it and i feel that if india can also do it sorry for a very long answer thank you very much i now request dr deepthi to please conclude the session ma'am on behalf of university of management studies i want to thank you sir for taking out time and be with us for this efdp it was a great learning experience and i'm sure all the participants will appreciate your unique way of describing opportunities that india has in fact you've given all of us food for thought to bring competitiveness research and knowledge creation in india i thank you once again sir thank you very much each of you i'm very sorry for uh, some strong views i give me for this critical and i'll be sharing the slide with you and i urge that you please build on this thing again very sorry for late start and again uh, i am sorry for it not at all sir not at all sir it was at our end problems were at our end thank you so much thank you so much amit sir over to you